The fish is pristine white, just the way fresh fish should be. That's what you want to look for. Mm. And these potatoes are perhaps the sort that you would get in a Maharashtra home. You want that fat from the meat to render itself into the curry and uplift that curry with its savory unctuousness, which is what a good meat curry is all about. I'm in the tech hub of Whitefield in Bengaluru and I'm here to savor a traditional dining experience. I'm here to visit Suryavanshi restaurant located on the second floor of this building and I'm told they do authentic Marathi cuisine and they've been doing this quite successfully for the last eight years. So let's go and find out what an authentic Marathi meal experience is all about here at Suryavanshi. Let's go. Well, you know you've arrived at a Maharashtrian restaurant when you see this huge Kolapuri chapel that's greeting you right at the entrance. Hello. Namaste. Namaste. Kailash here. My wife Aarti. Then Tejas and Dhanan Allah Raja. Thank you. And you are the family behind Surya Vanshi. Yes. We are the Surya Vanshis. You are the Surya Vanshis. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. So when you have a family that lends its name to the restaurant and to the food, you know that they are staking everything. <laughs> on the food. They're staking their family's reputation on the food. So that's always a good sign. So I was looking at your board downstairs and it says authentic Marathi cuisine. You know, when you say Marathi cuisine, you know, that's a fairly wide area to cover. So what is the cuisine here all about? It's actually a combination of uh, Kolapuri, a little right. bit of Mumbai, a little bit of Pune. It's that the coastal line that we have been following. Okay. So mainly our non-vegetarian cuisine is focused on Kolapuri cuisine. On Kolapuri. On so that's where you come yes. from. Yes. Right. And All right. the vegetarian uh, meal that we have, that's towards the little Pune side, a little subtle, not too spicy. Okay. And the Vada Pao is a little Mumbai-ish, Sabudana Vada is a little Mumbai-ish. All our seafood is around the Malwani cuisine. So all the fishes, everything, all that taste comes from the Malwan line. Well, when it comes to Kolapur, I think the mutton, mutton, people love their mutton there, right? And why is that? For every small and big function back in Kolapur, okay. it is celebrated over mutton. That's a goat? Yeah, it's a goat. It's a goat? Yeah. Not sheep? Not yeah. sheep. Alright. So, they celebrate every function, mutton has to be there. Okay. And actually, we started a chicken because of public demand. Okay. But in Kolapur, people eat no chicken. It's mostly it's mostly mutton. 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 So the mutton dishes here are definitely the dishes to try, I assume. Yes. Kolapuri. Kolapuri mutton. mutton yes. Okay. And when we talk about the seafood, it's the Malwani coastal part of Maharashtra. So I'm told that you are responsible for some of the recipes, especially with regards to the seafood. Yeah. Because uh, I got these recipes from my mother, my eye. Oh, from your eye. eye. Okay. Yeah. Basically, it's her recipe. Then okay. I put some twist into it by adding Kolapuri masala and all that. Okay. And for the fries and all, I use my masala. So all that talk about food has certainly got me excited. Can we go to the kitchen and yes. take a look at what's happening? Let's get into the kitchen here at Surya Vanshi. Let's go. These are the dry masalas. Okay. Uh, essentially, these are the masalas that go into the uh, all the Kolapuri food. We call this masala Malwani masala. We have kept the name as Malwani masala. Okay. Instead of keeping it as Kolapuri Kolapuri masala, we decided to keep it as Malwani masala. So what are some of the main ingredients of this masala? So I can see mace, big cardamom, big cardamom cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. What is this? Star this is star anise. Oh, this is star anise. Okay. Yeah. So it's broken, it's broken into, into pieces. Okay. And then of course you have some cloves, you have yeah. cardamom, shajira, shajira, and jeera, and we coriander, have dry coconut, wet coconut, sesame, sesame seeds, poppy seeds, poppy seeds fenugri, dana, pepper, kasuri methi. And then of course you have the fennel. Fennel, pepper, pepper. bay leaf, fen, bay leaf nutmeg, nutmeg, ginger garlic of course. Yeah. So what are you tasting when you're tasting a malwan masala? It's more of coconut. What we do is we take a good proportion of everything, huh. especially the coconut and the onions and the garlic. Huh. And it goes in the grinder huh. for almost four to five hours. It's, oh. It is a continuous pain of all these masalas that come out of the grinder. Okay. And then we fry it for about half to half an hour to one hour. Hey, Tumsa Malwani masala. Yes. It's all these ingredients and some onion in that. Hmm. This is the outcome. 
So that is the secret sauce. That is the secret exactly. Sauce. Yeah. And uh, we also use this masala for the very famous tamra and pandra rasa which we yes. Tamra and pandra rasa made in Kolapur. So there is no Kolapuri meal that's complete without the tamra ni pandra not, rasa. Because there's a lot of mutton stock left when you make mutton. Okay. So to what do you do with that stock? Okay. So back in Kolapur, they created a white masala which is known as a pandra rasa, pandra oh, masala, pandra masala, and tamra masala. So these two masalas go into making those two tamra and pandra rasa. Rasa basically are like soups. Yes. So basically also gets your juices flowing, I yes, suppose. Yes. yes, yes. So th these are two very very important dishes. Uh, if you are going to make a mutton thali or a chicken thali, these two are very essential. And what are vegetarian cuisine? What are you going to do with snacky items? Yes, in vegetarian cuisine, we have misal pao. Misal? Misal. Okay. Vada pao. But vada pao, I have an observation. In Bangalore, you have pao. Yes. You don't have to do it. Yes. So, what do you do with pao? I have a book search. Finally, there is a place. Uh, in JP Nagar, okay, uh, who makes this ladi pao, which is the salty ladi pao, which is available in Mumbai. Correct. So this guy makes them. Somehow found this guy out, and he supplies to on a regular basis. Ah, uh, so this is the ladi pao. Yeah, it just has that perfect crust. You mean you're tasting a vada pao? You don't want one of the sweet buns that tries to masquerade as a pao. You want the real stuff. You want that pao to have a bit of a salty edge because that's what you want to savor with that vada, with that batata vada. Misal pao. This is a matki. Moth beans. Moth beans. Okay. And we have a little bit of potatoes in pa there. Hey, misal madhe batata taktak 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 compulsory. Compulsory. Compulsary. Hey, what is the meaning of misal? Mixture of uh, ah. ingredients, lot of items in that. Some people put poha in that. Some people put. Whatever, I mean, misal is. So, misal manje mix, yes. mishmash of various things. Yeah, I love the fact that most of these dishes, the names have a meaning to it. So, when you come across an interesting name, ask why it's named so. Like this misal here, which is a combination of the usal, some mixture, some onion, a sprinkle of lime on that, and that makes it the misal. And with the pow, it's the misal pow. I like the comforting bite. Yes. Of the beans in that. Yeah. Because the sprouts. You know? The sprouts. Yeah. And then you have that searing warmth. Yeah. Yes. As that usal makes its way down your throat. You can feel that warmth envelop your throat. Oh, this is delicious. I think that oil, I think that's really where all the flavor is. Mmm. I can certainly taste that. And of course, so this is the usal. Now to make it the misal, I have to add the mixture. And some onions. Yeah, onions. You got that comforting bite of the lentils and the crunch of that sieve, that mixture that's gone onto it. Mm. Well, you certainly don't hold back on the spice. So if you find that a little too spicy, take some of that pow. I think this is probably the most comforting street food. Yes. To ever come out of Maharashtra. Yes. yes. There are some people, okay. particularly who come from Kolhapur and other places where they eat a lot of spice. <coughs> All right. And if they find this not to be very spicy according to their taste, okay. they will ask us to give them this kanda lasun chutney. Mm. So this kanda lasun chutney is the same chutney that goes into the vada pav? Yes, this is where it all begins. This is where it all begins, the kanda lasun chutney. Oh, I can feel that heat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, when I first put that in my mouth, I was waiting for it to say hello. <laughs> but now, it's not just said hello, it's actually made a full-on <laughs> spicy assault on my throat. It's not whispering a hello, it's shouting a hello. Mm. And so I got to put some in this. If you want to make it spicy, to be more spicier. Well, maybe a teeny weeny bit. I can feel that heat. Penetrate every pore of my mouth. That just melts away as it slithers warmly down my throat. Mutton sukka karto. Mutton sukka. Mutton sukka. Kolapuri mutton sukka. This is Sanjay, my chef, who is also from Kolapur. From Kolapur. Yes. He's got a working experience about for about 20 years now. So head chef, tum sir. Head chef. Okay, fantastic. Karun Lakotil, mutton sukka. Mutton sukka. So, mutton sukha is a Maharashtra dish or a Karnataka dish? Maharashtra. Maharashtra dish. Maharashtra dish. Oh. 
That mutton sukka certainly looks delicious. What are we doing? The khanda mutton sukka. Khanda mutton sukka. Yes. Suruvat mein chilli. Chilli ani curry pata. The tum sa seasoning right at the beginning. Yes. So he tum sa thetsa. Thetsa. Ata mutton khanda. He boiled mutton hai already. You know that's going to be a spicy dish. You make a beginning with chilies, green chilli, red chilli. And before you add the meat, you put the thecha, which is made again with green chilies. That's definitely another dish that I want to try here. Sada guy, what's happening here? I'm trying now kingfish. Kingfish. Marathi guy, surmai mantar. Surmai. Surmai. Some prawns. Hey, guy, fresh sea prawns hai ki? Fresh sea prawns. We only have sea prawns. So, uh, so farm prawns use no, no, no. And of course that compact size silver pomfret, safed pamphlet. And this is a masala. Kolapuri uh, fish fry masala. Fish fry masala. Asad kaya asta Chili powder, red chili powder. Red chili powder. Kanda lasun chutney. Kanda lasun chutney. Ginger garlic paste, salt and vinegar. And vinegar. So vinegar uh, gives it that, sarnes. the sourness. Pinch of turmeric. Pinch of turmeric. So you basically want to score the fish and also bend the fish while you apply that masala so that the masala goes all the way in. Yeah. Hey, pun rice. Yeah, rice. Basically, all of you are involved in the cooking. Yes. So I handle the veg. Uh, he, with her help, handles the entire seafood. All right. So there's a clear division of, for want of a better word, labor, <laughs> in terms of the dishes that are prepared here. So he's responsible for the vegetarian, the fish comes here and then the cook at the back does the mutton and chicken dishes. I love the gentle sizzle that's emanating from that tawa as that prawn is being fried. I can't wait to get to the table and taste that. Well, we watched the mutton being cooked and a few other dishes including those fish fries. So I can't wait to get to the restaurant and get our meal going here at Surya Vanshi. Let's go. It's a cozy, warm sort of a setting, a very simple affair, but it's the food that I'm told that does all the talking here. Vada pav. This is Sabudana Vada. Well, we're going to begin our meal experience here with that Sabudana Vada. The vada is nice and scrumptious, quite dry on the outside. There's no trace of the oil that has been deep fried in and there are wisps of steam that are emanating from this vada. There's some chilli as well that you can see. Mm. You can taste that chilli, you can taste the cumin that's there in this vada. All in all a tasty affair. One that I'm told goes very well with a sweet curd that also has some hordni in it. Hordni is basically the tempering that's used in this cuisine. Oh, that sweet curd makes for a delicious partner to this savory sabudana vada. Mm, I love that textbook crunch of this vada. It's crunchy on the outside and it's soft within. Get some of that chutney, get also some of that khodni. I think some chilli, some curry leaf, some mustard seeds. This, I know, will make for a flavorful bite. Mm, love it. Where is a sabudana vada, a vada pav can be far behind. So this is the Mumbai Ladi Pav. It's basically a pav that has a bit of a crust, a slight, a tinge of salty edge. There's no sweetness at all in this pav, which is what you need. And then, of course, you have the batada vada in this. And that kanda lasan chutney, which is what you definitely need in your vada pav. Now the batada vada here is not spherical, but it's flattened because they say it fits into that pav well. As you press down on that vada in the pav, you want the casing to break open and reveal that aloo, that potato inside. Mm. There's a crunch to that vada. The lasan onion, the garlic onion chutney is definitely making its presence felt. I can feel a bead of sweat running down the back of my head. And that pav just has a right texture to hold this batata vada. So if you like it spicy, go for some of that salted deep fried chilli with your vada pav. 
What you're looking for in a good vada pav, in addition to that, lasan kanda chutney is also ensuring that that batata vada, the casing of the batata vada isn't too thick. Because all that that casing needs to do is hold within itself that batata filling, that spiced potato filling. Because you already have a casing which is the pav. So when you're looking for a good vada pav, ensure that the batata vada doesn't have too thick a casing. I love the spicy hit of that kanda lasan chutney. The perfect spicy companion to this vada pav. Well, we have here the vegetarian thali. What a sumptuous thali if you're a vegetarian. So, of course, what you have here is the thecha, or also what they call the karadi here, which is basically a spicy chili chutney. You have some salad, you have the sol kadi, you have potato, you have a varad which is a yellow dal and then you have the matki usal and not to forget some curd and some gulab jamun. I'm going to taste a bit of this thali because I've also got a whole bunch of other dishes that I want to taste. I think we'll make a beginning with this varad which is the lentils. Mm. Well, that's a very comforting dal. Very gentle in its flavors. The lentils have almost dissolved. Oh, that's delicious. I think I'm going to take some of this chapati here and go for some of that potatoes. There's some tomato, there's some chili, also some curry leaves. Plenty of mustard seeds that I see in this. Mmm, the chapatis are soft and these potatoes are perhaps the sort that you would get in a Maharashtra home. So basically the food here is very home style, at least the thali that I've tasted. The potatoes are cooked just right. They have a bit of a bite. There's some coconut as well that's gone into the tempering of these potatoes, I suppose. These chapatis are nice and soft. I love this. I love the flavor of that cumin. And of course, there's a bit of chili as well, the onions. And if you like to spice things up, you can go for some of that. Thecha, which is basically what they refer to as a khardi, which is for the most part just green chilies. Oh, that's spicy, that's a spicy jolt to your senses. So you probably need to add that with some of that chapati just to tone down the spice a wee bit. I think I need to go for some of this dal, the varad. So the heat of that thecha or that karadi gets a little too much, go for that dal. Find some respite in the dal or better still, in that sol kadi. That's made with coconut milk and kokum for the most part. There's a bit of sour that comes from the kokum, but you're tasting the creamy sweetness of that coconut milk. This is the perfect respite from that spicy thecha. But now that we found some respite, we want to dive back into the spice. And this is where you go for the matki or the usal that's made with moth beans. There's also some potato in this. This is basically the base for the misal pav, the usal. I love the comforting bite of the matki, of the moth beans. <clears throat> that oil with all the spices is what gets you right at the throat. And it creeps up on you almost suddenly. So all that you're tasting first is the comforting bite of that moth bean. But then, that cut, the oil with all the spices that's floating on top of this, makes its presence felt. If you love your spice, you'll definitely love this and also that kharadi or the thecha. So if you're a vegetarian, this is just the sort of thali to have when you're at Surya Banshi. So they have different thalis. I was just looking at the menu. So they have the vegetarian thali, they have thalis in different levels. They have a puran poli thali, which also means that you get a puran poli at the end of it. You have a chicken thali, a seafood thali, and some mutton thali as well. So, if you want to come here and sample the fare, look for one of those thalis. But what we're doing next is going to the non-vegetarian fare and we're making a beginning with some seafood. So, we have here the rava fried prawn, and then you have the tawa fried fish, the paplet or the pomfret, and then you have a fish curry, a malwan fish curry. So I've asked for small portions of fish curry because, you know, I don't want to waste the food. And also this is a small portion of the, of the prawns and then some rice. But I think we're going to make a beginning with that rava fried prawns. Mm. You know, the prawns are fresh and they've been cooked just perfectly. I love the way the masala is naped onto that prawn and then crumbed before being shallow fried as we saw in the kitchen. 
On the palate, you have the soft crunch of the rava, and then the masala takes over. So the masala is spicy. There's a bit of heat, but it's also balanced by the sour that comes from the vinegar. It's quite a tasty masala that these prawns are fried in. So that's the masala that's livening up the flavors of this prawn fry. You also have some of that onion, garlic chutney that goes into this, which basically adds to the complexity in terms of the flavor that you get from this rava fried prawn, which is what makes this quite interesting. And the size of the prawns just perfect because I believe the tinier the prawns, the more the flavor. Having said that, I think we should move to the paplet. Oh no. Palm fruit, the white palm fruit, or also the silver palm fruit as it is known. It's hot. You can see that the fish is scored, and the masala has also found its way into those scores. The fish is pristine white, just the way fresh fish should be. That's what you want to look for. You know, it's interesting. It's the same masala that's gone into the prawn, has gone into the palm fruit. But when you're tasting the palm fruit here, then masala behaves, you know, completely different fashion. That masala allows for the flavor of that fish to shine through, and the fish is fresh. So there's none of that fishiness that you sometimes associate with stale fish. This is a taba fry, so there's no crumbing. So the fish is naped in that masala and then placed on a bed of rice rava before it is shallow fried. I could taste the tartness of the masala when I was tasting the prawns, but here I'm tasting the salty spicing of that masala. It's the same masala, but tastes entirely different when you're tasting it in the pomf fruit as opposed to tasting it in the prawns. I think time now to go for that fish curry along with some of that rice. The gravy is nice and thick, and a small piece of the kingfish. So I asked for a tiny portion because I want to taste a lot more of the food that they do here. Taste first the rice with that curry, minus the fish. You know, it's a great fish curry. When you taste what you associate to be the flavor of the fish in that curry, even before you taste the fish, there's a certain spicy edge to this fish curry. So although this is made from coconut, but I think the spice that is basically the malwan masala gives it a certain bit of aggression. So it's a coconut curry which has a spicy, aggressive edge, and that's what you're tasting. Taste some of that fish now. Hmm. Taste some of that fish and the rice and that curry. I have another thali to taste after this, but I want to taste some of that rice and that curry with some of the fry. This is certainly a curry that's quite warming in the spicing, some ginger heat, and that chili heat. I want to taste this curry with some of that fish fry. If you like your fresh curry to be spicy, this is only a fresh curry that you will enjoy. Oh, lovely! Well, this is our main act here of our lunch here at Surya Vanshi. This is the fried mutton thali. So we've got the fried mutton, which is a sukha. You've got the mutton masala. You've got an egg curry, and then you've got the two rasas. You've got the pandra rasa, and you've got the tamra rasa. Not to forget the sole curry. But what we also have here is a half portion of a very interesting dish, which is the mutton kharidi, which is a spicy dish made with the thetsa or the kharidi, which is a green chilli paste. They sure love their food spicy in Kolhapur. Let's make some place and dive right into this thali. Well, of course, you also have a little bit of a gulab jamun here if you like your sweet. But I think we should make a beginning with the rasa. Which is basically the stock that's flavored with all sort of goodness. So I'm going to make a beginning with the pandra rasa. Ah, that's a warming broth. That's made from the bones of the mutton of the goat. You can see some of that fat that's floating to the top of this. Very nourishing. So I'm told there's some sesame, there's some poppy seeds, some cashew that goes into it, which accounts for that white color. So it's basically ingredients that aren't coloured in any fashion, which are what go into the pandra rasa. Mm, that's quite warming. And then you have the tamra rasa. So I'm expecting this tamra rasa to be spicy. You can already see that film of oil and fat that's floating on the top. This is basically spiced oil. So you've got all the spices that go into it, and that's carried by the oil to the top, and that's where all the flavour resides. Tamra rasa. Oh, 
That's certainly a rasa that jolts your senses awake. You can definitely feel the heat of the chili, of that malwan masala that's gone into this. Oh, you can feel the warmth of that tamra rasa as it slithers down your throat. I can feel warm now in the pit of my stomach. That's the potency of this tamra rasa. I think we should move on to some of the other dishes here and I think I'm going to make a beginning with the Kolhapuri mutton sukka. I like the fact that there's also some fat on the meat because that's really where all the flavors are. That meat is soft. It just peels away from the bone effortlessly. Mm. That's a delicious preparation. In a manner of speaking, this is meat that's cooked twice. So you've got the meat that's first cooked in that masala. And then you've got pieces of the meat that are taken out from the masala with a bit of the masala and then cooked again. So you've got all that masala that's dried to a near crust that's sticking onto the meat. So you've got the masala that's cooked along with the meat and therefore carries the flavor of the meat. And then that same masala holds on to that meat by virtue of that pan frying process that they used to make the mutton sukkah, which is what gives it a much deeper flavor. Mm. That meat is cooked to textbook perfection. The quality of the meat with that fat. Oh, I love it. Mm. I was managed to suck out all the marrow of this bone. This is a tasty dish, but also quite spicy at that. It's a sort of spice hit that makes you want to go back for more. And this time with some chapati for good measure. The meat is soft. Literally don't need to chew on it. It's cooked as well as that. I think next it's time to go for that mutton curry. So this is a half portion of the mutton curry. So there's plenty of green chilli that goes into the curry, the thetsa, in which that mutton is cooked. But before that, there's more chilli that's added to the pan. Green chilli as well as fresh red chilli. So I'm bracing myself for a spice bomb of a dish here. All that you can see in this is a green of the chilli and the chilli seeds. So it's spicy no doubt, which is what the thecha or the karadi is all about, which is the chilli paste that this mutton is cooked in. But as it's cooked in the thecha, there's also some onion that's added to it. There's also some shredded coconut that's added to it. So that in a manner of speaking helps counterbalance some of that spicy punch of that green chilli thecha. So you're tasting some of the sweetness that comes from the onions. You're tasting the fresh crunch of that freshly grated coconut. So on the whole, actually, this dish is not as spicy as eating just plain thecha. But what I really love here is the manner in which the meat is cooked. The meat is cooked to perfection. Good quality goat that's cooked extremely well with some chapati. There's plenty of grated coconut that you can taste in this dish. It also makes it a nice enduring bite, that fresh coconut. If you like it even more spicy, there's plenty of chilies here. That's part of the preparation that you can tuck into. As for me, I think I'm going to go for some of that meat. I can feel the sweat trickle down. Actually pour down in a steady stream at the back of my head. It's as spicy as that. But it's a sort of wicked spice that makes you want to come back to that dish for more. Which is what this khardi mutton is all about. There's also plenty of coriander that goes into this along with some curry leaf that lends it a certain freshness. And if you feel you've had too much of the spice, you can go for some of that sole curry. There's a sort of cooling respite that you need from tasting that curry mutton. I can feel that heat singe my lips, my tongue, it's as spicy as that. When you're eating it, you don't realize it. But when you're done eating, that's when the full fervor of the spice takes over your palate. I think I need to go for more of this sole curry. There's also some mutton masala here. But I think before tasting the mutton masala, there's some egg curry here that's also part of this fried mutton thali. I definitely want to taste some of that. It's basically boiled eggs in a masala, in a gravy. I guess if you haven't had enough of the protein, the fried mutton sukkah and also the mutton masala, well, the egg curry is a way of giving you a bit more of a protein bang for your buck. There's a pleasing sort of a curry. You can taste the fennel, you can taste the cumin. Let me get some more of that gravy. When you have boiled egg in a gravy, 
I tend to find them quite disparate because unless the egg is soaked in that gravy for a while, it doesn't hold on to the flavor of the masala. So therefore, you need some more of that gravy to ladle on to that egg. I just made some space on my thali for that rice. This is some jeera rice that I'm going to taste with that mutton masala. You can taste the flavor of the goat, the meat and the fat in that curry. But I wish that curry was a little hotter. It's warm, but when you place your fingers in a curry, you want it to be hot. Let's taste the curry just with that rice. That's a delicious curry. Some meat with that curry. Mm. They most certainly know how to cook their meat and also get the right quality of meat here at Surya Manji. This meat is tender, it's soft. It's got a bit of fat which gives it all that flavor. You need the flavor that comes from the fat, especially when you're braising a curry over an extended period of time. You want that fat from the meat to render itself into the curry and uplift that curry with its savory unctuousness, which is what a good meat curry is all about. There's also some coconut that I taste, but I think that coconut is from that jeera rice, probably some tempering that goes into it. And of course, the flavor of the cumin from that jeera rice. Mm. You know, having tasted the, the spicy mutton sukha and the even spicier spice bomb level curry mutton, I was bracing myself for a spicy attack even when it came to the mutton curry. But thankfully, that's none of that. You do have the spice, but that spice that manifests itself in a gentle warmth on the palate. That's what the mutton curry here is all about. And makes for a tasty combination with that jeera rice. Well, we have a gulab jamun here as part of our thali. We're going to taste some dessert, but let's taste this as well. This is a gulab jamun that had aspirations of becoming a kala jamun, I suppose. We'll make for a tasty bite to end the meal and just about that. This is a very popular Srikhand. Okay. This also is made in-house. Homemade? Homemade. Very famous Puran Poli in Maharashtra. So I think we're going to make a beginning with some of that Puran Poli and get some of that ghee slathered all over. Well, if you're in an indulgent mood, you might as well go the whole nine yards, as they say, and get that ghee over every bit of your Puran Poli. Also known as the Obbattu in Karnataka. So basically, it's almost like a paratha, which is made of maida and wheat, stuffed with some lentils, with some jaggery that goes in. We have a sweet tooth and fancy a bit of indulgence. Well, this Obbattu or the Puran Poli, slathered with tons of ghee, certainly fits the bill. And you can also dip that obatu into some more of that ghee and savor it. I think there's also some cardamom that goes into that and that's what I'm tasting. Certainly makes for an indulgent dessert fix here. I can go for more of that but I think I want to taste some of the other desserts here too. So this is the amras which I'm told is made from mango pulp. I think this is a quintessential Maharashtrian dessert to end your meal here with. Oh, I love that sweetness of the Alfonso mango. Oh, I love this. There's a hint of darkness to this mango. Perhaps because it's still early in the season, but it still makes for a delicious mouthful. And I'm told the other combination is to have some of this puran poli with that amras. Now, this is something that I haven't tried before, but when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When in Surya Manshi, do as the Maharashtra Zora, I'm told. That the people in North Karnataka love their obattu with the amras. Oh, I'm dripping that amras all over my table. I think what makes this combination of the puran poli and the amras super interesting is the sweet acidity of the amras that balances against that rich sweetness of the puran poli. And I think that's what makes for an interesting combination. So you have that ripe acidity of the mangoes in the amras that balances against the 
cloying sweetness, that cloying rich ghee laden sweetness of the puran puri. Certainly a dish to try, especially when mangoes are in season. Mm. I love it. I can go for more of the amras, but then we also have the shrikhand, another quintessential Maharashtra dessert. Thick, hunkered, a bit of saffron, and flavored with cardamom. Mm. That shrikhand disappears on the palate, leaving behind just that gentle, lingering aroma of the cardamom. That's gone in to flavor it. Just a sort of way to end your Maharashtran meal here at Surya Vanshi, the Shrikant. Well, I've enjoyed my Maharashtran meal here at Surya Vanshi. But I think what's really interesting here is the charming family that's behind this enterprise that's seeking to showcase the flavors of Maharashtra in Nama Bengaluru. So if you want to savor some authentic Maharashtran fare, make sure you get to Surya Vanshi and check out the many Marathi dishes on offer. Until the next episode of Gourmet Me on the Road, stay safe and happy eating. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!